Hyderabad, our next destination was Hampi, 600 kilometers southwest in the state of Karnataka. The direct route would involve spending most of the night on the railway station at Guntakal. To get round the problem, we took a train eastward to Guntur, near the Bay of Bengal, where we had time for an evening meal before catching the sleeper westward. We arrived at Hospit in the morning and took a rickshaw to Humpy. The modern village of Hampi Bazaar lies within the boundaries of the ruined city of Vijayanagar. In 1520, a Portuguese visitor recorded a great bazaar of very beautiful houses with balconies and arcades. You can glimpse their remains behind these ramshackle structures. <laughs> The family which runs this restaurant sleep on its floor. Every morning the lady of the house draws a rangoli, sifting rice flour onto the dirt threshold to ensure that the day will be propitious. Vijayanagar was the capital city of one of the largest Hindu empires in history. Hampi Bazaar has been built over its wide processional street, leading to a temple like an Egyptian pylon. By the beginning of the 16th century, the city sprawled over 43 square kilometers. Surrounded by seven concentric circles of fortifications and sheltering a population of half a million, it was a great center of trade in diamonds and precious items of all kinds.
We have arrived at an auspicious moment. A three-day festival starts tomorrow. In the 14th century, Muslim invaders were pillaging all of North India. They pushed south to challenge the Vijayanagar Empire. Jayanagar means city of victory. Facing annihilation from the Muslim invaders, the ancient Hindu kingdoms of all of South India formed an alliance. They mustered armies of millions of men and thousands of elephants. Wars, treaties and treacheries ensued under a series of bloodthirsty rulers on both sides who numbered the populations they slaughtered in lakhs. A lakh is a hundred thousand. The wheels of this chariot, the size of millstones, once revolved. The Hindu alliance effectively drew the line at this shallow river, halting the Muslim invasion and preserving the kingdoms of Dravidian India for 200 years. The divide is still apparent in the religions, languages, culture and political structures which separate North and South India today.
A fortified outpost once stood here on the north bank of the Tungabhadra River. The armies of Mohammed Tuklak, the selfsame despot who evacuated the population of Delhi to Aurangabad and back, laid waste to it. But they failed to cross this bridge to Vijayanagar. Although an engraved plaque commemorates the completion of a new bridge in 1997, only this unfinished concrete tower stands in the riverbed. Could it be that the Karakal Paddlers Union exerted political pressure on the Highway Planning Department? Another day, another Rangoli. I'm not going 
Classical dancers rehearse tonight's Barat Natyam performance. The elephant stables at the Royal Palace. The laundry has put our washing on display.
From Humpy, we made an eight-hour train journey westward across the Deccan Plateau and down the Western Ghats to Vasco da Gama and Panjim in Goa. There are no houses left standing in old Goa, the original Portuguese settlement, no secular life whatever except for the odd roadside cafe. The grand cathedrals, however, are for the most part intact and as proud as in the days when they represented civilization in a savage land. The corpse of St. Francis Xavier lies entombed here. Every ten years the ghoulish remains are exhibited to the public. Not today, fortunately.
A 200-year-old Portuguese colonial home is now the Panjim Inn. The market at the town of Mapsa on the way to the beaches. <laughs> Let's 
I like muscles. Without any uh, prawns or prawns. Except muscles. The antenna, as I told you, allows you to find in the Irish coast. The Irish coast. The lobsters from the Irish coast. This, this is not an Irish lobster. It is an Irish lobster. From Margao in Goa, we took the train down the coast to the southern Karnataka city of Mangalore. The next day, we caught a bus back up the Western Ghats to the temple towns of Balur and Halibid. <laughs> The temples at Halibid were built by the Hoysala dynasty in the early 12th century. One there and one here. 
and he's got some very fancy uh, bracelets around his hooves and uh, garters around his legs. Back there in front. Despite more than 80 years of labour, the Hoi Salaswara temple was never completed, as these preliminary incisions show. This is a scene from the Ramayana. There's Rama shooting an arrow, which you can see going through the trees of the forest, past this many headed cobra, past these warriors into this guy's stomach here. At the end, there are some of the monkey army watching. <laughs> Coffee there, yes, ready. Here? Yeah, you've got that account for me. 
Nearby Balua was the major town of the Hoysalas. An important victory against the Cholas, 1116, inspired the temple of Chanakashava. Construction continued for more than a century. Lady looking in her mirror. Lady holds folded betel nut in her left hand. The maid on her right side holds water in a vessel, and the maid on the left is filling it to a syringe. A lady talking to her pet parrot. A monkey is pulling at the edge of her sari, and she's trying to beat it off with a twig. The huntress is aiming her arrow at a bird in the canopy behind her. This lady is bending her body in three different ways as she dances. She's disguised as a scent, holding a rod with a skull at the top of her left hand. A flautist. The maid on her left is sitting to the tune of the flute, it says. She's a violinist. Her maids are arranging the concert. This woman is wearing a beard and a moustache, like a man, and playing on a drum. This is a huntress holding in her left hand a fork-like spear with the skull at the top. Basma Mohini dance. God Vishnu takes the form of Mohini. The right hand, the tip of her nose, the left breast and the right thumb are all in a straight line. She has just shaken a scorpion out of the folds of her sari and is rather worried about it. This lady has put on her best dress and ornaments. A small attender is putting a ring on her toe. This is a world bewitching beauty. Above her left shoulder there's a jackfruit with a fly on it and the lizard is planning to catch the fly.